Hi everyone, it's Diane with Sobatique and today is Fabric Friday. Today is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be talking about three different fabrics. We're going to talk about our rayon, our linen, and a little bit about our 115 inch wide batik cotton. I'm going to start off by a quick little reminder. Last Fabric Friday, which was two weeks ago, I started a little challenge up, uh, for myself, which was to, well, I'm also answering a, a couple, couple of customer questions, but which is how do the rayon and the linen differ when you're sewing with them on specific garment patterns? and um, there are some differences and I thought you know something there's only one way to figure this out and one way to really share it and that is to make two garments one a rayon one a linen for four different patterns and so last two weeks ago I spoke about the Remy Raglan top which was really a fun project to work on um, today I'm going to talk about the Verdun woven t-shirt and let's just start with that. A quick little reminder about the Verdun um, woven t-shirt. This is by Liesl and Company, by the way, and it's really a fun, super simple, super fast top to make. Um, I mean, seriously, I sewed the one that I'm wearing last night in about three hours. It was all cut out, but it's really a fast top to make. And let's, let's talk about it a little bit. The pattern actually has two options. And one is a sleeveless version and a, a round neck, or you can make the V-neck, which is what I did here, and a long sleeve. So you can mix and match any option that you want. And there's also an optional pocket if you would like. The t-shirt has darts to make it simple to fit. And it has a really fun hem where you're actually adding a cuff like a hem addition to it flipping it under to give it that really really nice weight to the hem of the garment but otherwise it's a simple v-neck with a facing stay stitching underneath to keep it in place you can also top stitch all the way around the facing to keep your facing tacked and then the sleeve ends about right here with your long sleeve and so what I did is of course this is the linen and this is our Medora Flora in the shade of Copen blue and it's really really a great top and I'll try to put up an image where I'm wearing it so that you can see the difference between the rayon version that I'm wearing now and that linen version okay Otherwise, I'd have to do a quick change here, and I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so um, the rayon, let me stand up here. The rayon version is um, drapier, which it should be, and it is, I don't know. I think it fits almost exactly the same. I made the exact same shirt this time. The Remy, what I did is I modified the rayon and made it longer, and I decided not to do that again. I'm gonna make the same exact <laughs> one so that you can see the differences in the drape. Um, so, couple things to remember though, and I should have shortened my sleeve because it is a very long sleeve, and I probably would have made the, the bottom of this just a little bit longer for myself, but if you can see here, it has a, a hemline that's higher in the front and lower in the back. And um, other than that, it's just, it's really, really a classic style that you can wear with basically anything. Now, I found from a construction perspective, I think for this top, it was much easier easier for me to sew using the linen and for only one spot in the garment and that is the hemline with the attached hem that you sew to the bottom all the way around 
I felt like uh, with the rayon that I was stretching it a little bit. The facing on the hem, I found it to not match exactly the same as the hem of the garment. And so I had to do a little bit of fussy work with that. Um, but otherwise, it's the same. But I just feel like when you're working with the rayon, if you're a rayon uh, uh, garment sewist, it just moved a little too much. And I would probably stay stitch the hem before adding the hem facing to it and I think it would move less. So that would be the only thing that I would do differently between the linen version and the rayon version that I'm wearing. But um, I absolutely love this top and um, I'm gonna probably make another one for the summer that doesn't have the sleeve on it. I think it's just so cute and I love this fabric. This is the Valhalla um, Pastel Delight which is so soft and it's just, I think it would be a great jacket um, and probably a dress for summer, just a beautiful, beautiful dress. So that is the Verdun. They're really, you know, maybe I picked a too, too simple of a pattern, but there really wasn't that much of a difference between the two. Again, except for the hem, but super fast and you'll absolutely love it. And so I will make sure that we have a um, kit for the rayon version just like we do for the linen version here as well and the pattern will be optional so that you can select your fabric it always will come with the facing that's or uh, interfacing that's the only other thing you need for this particular garment so it's super simple the next challenge that I gave myself is and I've already picked the fabric but is the Montrose top and this is by Cashmerette and I'm excited to make this one. I am going to make, um, I'm going to sew up the three quarter length version of this, but I'm going to shift the back. There's two versions for the back. There's one with a back yoke and one with, some, with just a simple straight back with a keyhole and I'm going to do the back yoke. So I like to kind of mix these up just a little bit, but I'm also going to make the same version, linen and rayon. So this time what I did is I selected, now I have not pressed this, but it's all washed. I should have pressed it. But this is our linen in the shade of hand dyed soft mint. And as you can see, I always run this through my serger before I wash it. You see that edge? Otherwise, everything gets frayed. But this is the soft mint. So I think this is going to be a gorgeous Montrose top. And for the rayon, I selected the Violetta. Let me get this right side out here so that you can see it a little bit better. The Violetta in early autumn. You see this? Now, the reason I selected this one is because several, maybe a month ago or so, I made um, a cardigan that is made from our dark brown jersey knit. And I think this will be beautiful underneath that jersey knit cardigan. So this is going to be kind of fun to make. So the next Fabric Friday we'll have, well, maybe before, but we'll get a couple of these up for you to see how they look and any of the differences that there might be between the two when sewing up the Montrose top. But this one also is, um, there's two pattern groupings. One is a size zero to 16 and the other goes up to, I believe it's a 32. Um, yes, 12 to 32. And of course, any range cup size. So darts and simple yoke and simple neckline facing. I should probably make some of these more difficult, but I think the next one might be. <laughs> um, but this one basically for our rayon is 45 inches wide. I cut and washed two and a quarter yards of the rayon. 
And for the linen, I actually, it only requires a yard and five eighths, and I think I washed two yards. So we'll see how this turns out and wish me luck. But I think the only other thing I need is interfacing. Yes, because I always make my own bias tape for the neckline. Um, and then I won't need the button because I'm going to do the yoke back for this one. That is that. <sighs> Wish me luck on that. The fourth, just as a reminder, the fourth challenge that I'm going to um, undertake is our dress and tunic or dress and top of the Cielo. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, pattern by Closet Core. Okay, I haven't picked out my fabrics yet, so you should help me pick out my fabrics for that one. The next project I want to share is one that I posted on our website earlier this week, and it is a new garment kit. And I have always wanted to work on another loungewear pajama uh, garment, and so I did. But this time it's not Jersey Knit, it is our cotton. And it's the Carolyn Pajamas by Closet Core. And it's so classic, look at the style of this. It is a, a button down top with a really fun neckline. It's got a notched collar neckline and long sleeves, long pant, you can have short sleeves, shorts, whatever combination that you want. And it has some really fun instructions on how to add piping to the top and where your cuffs are attached. And also it has this really neat um, split pocket with piping on there as well. And so lots of options for this particular um, pajama. And I think it's in my opinion, it's like less of a pajama and more of loungewear because it's such a nicely structured top and pants. So what I did is I selected our sachet pink color in the motif here is Violetta. And it's really fun. And I don't often wear a lot of pink, but I really love how this turned out. So the collar is... A very simple, you know something, I will describe this as a classic shirt. It's almost like that because it has a structured collar, a very nice neckline. It has a button down front. We have pocket options here. And I did a little bit of styling with mine and I actually added a coordinating uh, under collar here to make it kind of fun. And coordinating cuffs. This is Violetta Lilac that I put with this. And it has a shirt tail design to it. And I'll make sure that I put up a picture here so that you can see me wearing it. And it's just, it's so comfortable. So, you know, you get home from work and you want to change and you want to put something on that's not always sweatpants or whatever it happens to be. This is so great. And it's so comfortable. And now the pants, let me set that there. So the pants are an elastic waist. And this takes, um, it's a nice waistband because it's an inch and a half elastic. And I only had an inch at home. So I did kind of fudge with that a little bit, but um, it works out fine. There's kind of a faux, um, closure here that's fun to put on pockets you've got your pockets a nice size pocket and otherwise it's just a simple pant and then of course I have my matching cuffs <laughs> so now if you were to add piping as I said I did not do that but you add piping to finish off the, the edges here and I think if this had all been the one sachet pink and I I do have purple piping at home I could have added that it would have been just a little simpler accent to it but very very fun now the one thing I'm going to talk a little bit about 
a few adjustments that I did make to this particular garment. The, um, I did need to lengthen the pant from the crotch up to the top of the waist. I felt like it was just a little too low. I wanted it to sit a little bit higher. Um, that was the only adjustment I made to the pants. They are long, so measure your inseam so you know how long to make these. But otherwise, the pants, really, there's absolutely nothing to comment on it. It is a very styled pant. It is not full. It's tapered really nicely um, and just feels great on. The top, I didn't adjust a thing. I simply made the size that was perfect for myself and it fit beautifully. So you could make this out of any cotton and have a classic shirt, not necessarily just loungewear. It's just really, really very stylish and very well done. The pattern itself is for sizes zero. Where's my pattern jacket here? zero to 20, where a zero is the bust measurements of 31, hips of 33, and a size 20 is a bust of 46 with a hip of 48. And um, the yardage that's required, I did, of course, the long, long sleeve, long pant, because we're still here in winter time. I am going to make this as a short sleeve shorts as well. I think it'll be a great combination. Um, but the yardage for the long version takes five yards of 45 inch wide fabric up to five and three fourths. And for view C, which is the shorts, is three and a half yards up to four yards. So what I did is our cotton is 115 inches wide. And so I created our quilt kit, quilt kit. Um, see, I think of cotton and I think of quilts, but our garment kit to include two yards of the 115 inch wide fabric. And what's great about using the extra wide cotton for this project is that First of all, you use less fabric, but you also have an amazing, I find it easier to lay out your pattern pieces on a larger piece of fabric. So your, for example, your pant legs are always double layered. Um, when it's 45 inch wide fabric, sometimes you have to lay them out more than once to cut them out. So I just found it very easy to lay out um, the pattern on the wide fabric, which was great. And I only had a little bit left. I probably had the equivalent of a half a yard by 45 left over. And that was it. The other thing that I did use, you saw the coordinates that I put the lilac that I had for the various positions on the garment. I actually used a little bit less than a half a yard at 45 inches for that particular accent. Um, probably more like a third of a yard would be all you would need for that. And then the additional notions that are included in the kit are the five buttons, the interfacing, and the inch and a half elastic for your waistband. Um, we can put options up for coordinating thread as an option, um, but that's not included in the kit itself. And you'll see on our website that we've made the Carolyn pajama pattern an option because a lot of you have the pattern. So what we're putting together is the fabric pack with all of its notions to make the actual pajamas. So there you go. I absolutely love these. And I did have one person who asked for a sew along. Um, so I think I have to start doing more of the sew alongs. So that will be uh, hopefully coming in the future. One thing I want to share with you today too is a little bit more information about our linen. And um, I'm holding a bolt of the um, 
Delft. This is hand dyed. This particular one is hand dyed Delft and it is a beautiful shade of blue, I have to say. And even though I selected the soft mint, maybe that's one of the ones I need to select when I work on this project. <laughs> so we'll have to see. Um, but it is 54 inches wide and it is, it has a beautiful drape to it. You know, I, I haven't shown this for a little bit of time here. You don't really get to see all of the drape when you're working, on, when I share with you these garments um, on a mannequin. So I just wanna share this with you again. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful weight of linen and um, I'll try to share here a few more images of our linen on um, here a little bit of collection information for you so you can see what we currently have uh, in stock with our linen and there's so many beautiful shades for spring and summer our pastels and the lakes and just the beautiful rich shades um, and so we'll go through a little bit of a fabric show here in a moment. I'll start here on the right, and this is our hand-dyed chrome and Medora Flora chrome, Violetta dusty denim. Here's the Delft. This is the hand-dyed and the Medora Flora. Here's the deep, deep shade of twilight blue, which is hand dyed. And then our twilight blue in the motif of Phoenix. Medora Flora in dark brown. Our hand dyed dark brown. This is Animal Skin Charcoal. And these two shades are Ivy. So this is our hand dyed Ivy and Medora Flora. This is Azalea, hand dyed Azalea. And here is our solid black. This is hand dyed bright purple. Lady May, that's the motif name. And this is Merlot, I love this. The next two are hand dyed Copen Blue and Medora Flora Copen Blue. So this is what I made the Verdun woven top from. And this is the Phoenix Lake and Hand Dyed Lake. And here we have our Violetta in Soft Mint and Hand Dyed Soft Mint. Violetta Sachet Pink hand dyed sachet pink, Medora Flora, and these two are the, are the shade of sage, so Medora Flora and the hand dyed coordinate, and then lastly our hand dyed lilac. And just like all of our other batik fabrics, it is machine washable, machine dry. Um, I actually do take this out of the dryer a little bit before it's completely dry and hang it up. And I feel like once I do that, it sort of kind of relaxes a little bit, which is wonderful. Um, reduces a little bit of the pressing that you may want to have. So if you're a linen person who loves the, the kind of crinkly look, you don't have to worry about pressing. Um, if you're somebody who likes it a little bit more polished and pressed, then you definitely will have to press the linen once you um, take your fabric out of the dryer. But simple to care for using Synthropole, 
our typical fabric wash. And um, again, I always serge my edges and use a dryer sheet and I'm good to go. So we'll have to work on a, a few more projects for, and share a few more patterns for our linen as well. So this is our Fabric Friday for today. And I want to, a quick reminder that my next project will be the Montrose top. And the two fabrics that I selected are going to be so much fun for this top. And again, I'm going to do, let's see, I'm gonna do the three quarter length with the back yoke on this one. So it's gonna look very similar to the blue lacy version here on the left, okay? I want to thank you for joining me today and have a wonderful Fabric Friday and an enjoyable weekend. And let's keep sewing, smiling, and sharing.